today we are building a casting and spinning version of the all new American Tackle Suka 2 handle system with Alex Funky of Foundation Outdoor Group, who has built and tested a lot of these already. Yep, sure have. We'll show you tips and tricks on how to assemble these, and then we're gonna take them out in the water and fish them and show you how they perform. All right, Funky, tell me a little bit about the Suka 2. So the Suka 2 is actually a super important product. Uh, first off, it won best of show at ICAST, which a rod component has never done. Pretty sweet. So it's super cool in that aspect. It's a blow molded carbon fiber uh, handle system. So basically the real seat, the handle, everything is molded into one solid piece. Uh, Sensitivity is incredible, um, super lightweight and uh, super nice to build with. Also easy to build with too for some of those OEM or big manufacturer builds. Of course, right? yeah, you're not messing with winding checks except for in front of the uh, real seat threads, but glue and go basically. No glue popping out of real seat seams and behind grips and winding checks and stuff. So they should be extremely easy to glue up for a production aspect or for even a custom builder. Not to mention reaming either. You don't have to worry about reaming cork, EVA, winders, Nothing. anything. You Nothing. Just glue it and go. Glue it and go. Now, how would a small scale a custom rod builder is building one to 10 rods a month benefit from a Suka 2? Um, well, it's obviously going to elevate your price point of whatever rod you're selling. Um, mm -hmm. If you are selling a rod, uh, if not just for yourself, um, I've really enjoyed fishing with them since pre ICAST. I definitely believe that uh, the sensitivity aspect is greatly increased with something like this. It's not a porous material like uh, EVA, cork, or even wind grip. It's, a, it's super solid. It's going to transmit bites and uh, bottom structure, whatever you're fishing, a lot better than any of those other components would be. So Jake, uh, in building these, uh, looks like you've already arbored up uh, the handle system. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it looks like you cut that blank on that one as well a little bit. I did. This was a 7.3 blank and I want it to remain 7.3 once we add this. This adds six inches exactly with this blank in diameter. So I made two cuts, three inches each off this blank and it ended up being exactly six inches. Tell them why I did two cuts versus just one so, six inch cut. <laughs> so why this is extremely important, as you see here, the, uh, the taper on these handles um, are gonna differ between spinning and casting. And if you're using an extremely aggressive tapered blank, if you go ahead and cut your six inches, like it may fall further down into the handle system than what you originally wanted. So what I always recommend, uh, you don't have to go as much as an inch at a time, but don't go more than probably three inches at a time to make sure that you're at your correct gluing points and your total length of rod. Mm -hmm. awesome. This is a MHX SJ812, which is a 6.9. We had the Suka 2 and it's right at 7.4. So we can use it for inshore or bass. Oh. A right, perfect in between. Rod. Perfect length form. Mm -hmm. So you're using pro glue here for the gluing of the casting grip. We're gonna do two different types of gluing styles. We'll talk about this and why you're doing it. So I'm gonna, um, for the casting one, um, it's important to understand <clears throat> that your blank doesn't go all the way through the handle. So you're going to lose the weight for the balancing on the back side. We're going to glue the casting grip first. We're going to do the spinning and casting a little different. Talk about what you're doing for the casting and why. So uh, right now, uh, since Jake cut some of this uh, weight off the back of the blank, um, and obviously because the blank doesn't extend all the way through the, the whole entire grip, you're losing some weight back there. So it's going to greatly affect your balance. Um, what we're going to do is I got some Pro Glue 5 mixed up here um, and I'm going to tape the butt cap on and then we're going to add some, uh, these are quarter ounce lead bullet weights, uh, cheap, you can get them at a cheap tackle shop. Uh, every rod builder should have these handy for balancing, um, for counterbalance. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop them in after the five minute is cured um, and then put the blank in. It's obviously arbored just to test the balance before we glue everything up for, uh, for final say. Mm -hmm. So pro glue is now cured. Um, we're gonna start dropping some weights down here and we're gonna start testing the balance. Guess you don't need to put the hood on, you can just slide the reel in. Yep, exactly. In one slot. So what you're gonna feel when you first start to balance these is that it's still extremely tip heavy because remember the blank's only going to about here. So all this is almost nothing. No that's weight. the densest part of the blank, yes. usually. Yes, exactly. So we're definitely gonna need another one. Um, and then remember, if you're going to do it this way, we're going to pro pour some pro glue down there as well. There we go. And uh, <laughs> and uh, that's going to add a little weight too. So you're still going to want it just a fuzz tip heavy. 
because when you add the, the extra glue, it's going to definitely add some more weight back there. It's pretty close. I think one more will do it, though. Yeah, it's almost perfect. So. That is sick. <laughs> They're light. Dude. And I only, so that was only three quarters of an ounce that I actually added back to. Which could sound like a lot, but you're taking, you have to take into account, you're, you don't have cork, EVA, or wind grips on there. You don't have extra glue. Aluminum trim. There's a lot you're missing and you obviously, by doing yeah. this in a good way. So adding the weight back is not like adding weight to a normal rod. It's just bringing it to that normal yeah. one. It's still lighter than a normal rod. And like you said, you already cut six inches off the back, so there's a little bit of weight there. So you're kind of count minuscule ounces at this point but mm -hmm. uh when you get it all built up you'll be able to definitely tell the difference in balance and weight for sure what's the next step just got to mix up some uh 40 minute pro glue and uh pour it down the tube okay shake her up make sure it's all down there and uh let that cure so let's go ahead and mix up some pro paste because we can just do this whole thing all at once uh jake's mi mixing the pro paste now um i've got my 40 minute here i'm gonna go ahead and pour this down and then basically you can do this all in one final swoop. So we we'll just take the uh, end of my brush here and just funnel it down into the tube itself. Is there a standard about how much you should put down there or just um, think about enough to cover all the weight? So what you'll see here next is I'm actually going to like, your gravity is going to pull it down, but you can see like they're not, you can hear them still moving. And you can, you can feel them moving in there too. And then one, once enough glue gets into them mm -hmm. uh, or, and surrounds them, and then obviously gravity will continue to pull more glue down there. But go ahead and shake it. Started, started, yeah. nothing shaking. Yeah, exactly. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the pro paste here. Um, and what I typically like to do is actually just okay. get some. Oh, perfect. I like to actually get some in the tube first. Um, because what's going to happen is as you, those tape arbors go down, you're going to get a better connection point down here where it uh, necks down on the blank. Speaking of the tape arbors, let's talk about why and where we taped these real quick before we put this in. So we put one at the very bottom, which you said you don't usually do, but I added for good measure. I like it. It's going to create that little yeah. bit more sturdiness down there in the Even neck. Even more bond. Yep. And then I'll definitely put one towards the bottom. Yep. And then three right here under where the real seat threads are because this expands down here obviously the id gets bigger but here it's all the same size on the inside diameter so you want to add three arbors here to really lock it in on the casting that is on the spinning you're probably going to have two yep all right so glue the blank as well right yep so um what we'll do two here real quick i always like to tape my threads here uh when i'm gluing any um real seats on just a couple little turns like that shouldn't you have done that before you glued yeah that's okay <laughs> <laughs> well when i'd like to push the blank into uh or push real seats down i always like to do yeah, a little extra like slide and start gooping out and stuff. Out, yeah. yeah so do you need glue here nope why um because of actually that tube being completely hollow mm -hmm. um you're you're basically just adding weight and glue that's never going to meet a contact surface okay so now obviously we already spined the blank uh now it's just you're twisting when you put it down always Dang, almost no glue seeped out. That's nice. Almost want to seed it just like you would a fly rod. What do you mean by that? Like, just give it one extra quarter turn as you get it nice and placed down. Now, you have the blank and the handle. Yep. But no hood. What are you going to do right here where the blank meets the handle? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do... Um, American Tackle has a, a seat check long. Uh, they can be used for a lot of things. Um, basically, it's just a long winding check uh, that'll fit up against uh, 16 uh, millimeter seats. Mm -hmm. So um, that's not the only thing you can do, though. You can use a regular um, winding check yep. or a thread ramp, yep. too, right? We're yeah, I like thread doing ramp on the spinning one. Yep, I like doing a lot of thread ramps. They're quick, they're easy. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, so for this one here, I just usually do a thin bead, slide it right down. You're just going to Slowly spin it, get it right there. No glue, no mess, new cleanup. That's nice. Now, just set her up straight and let her dry. Let her cure. So you have the handle completely glued, the yep. weight's in there, all the glue is done, the cleanup's done. Now, how do you want to let it dry? 
I always prefer to do it vertically, obviously, because you guys still have the 40 minute that you want to go to the bottom with the uh, the bullet weights there. Um, so I would just, I usually set it in the corner or have a little spot in my office and where I just let them stand vertically just like that. Okay. Funky, I know you have a sales meeting to attend, so we'll let you go. And I will glue up this spinning Suka 2 and show the people the other way how to glue it up. Perfect. Thank you. As soon as you get it done, let's go fish and go pull on some. I'm ready. Let's go. Now we're going to show you another way to glue this up where we only use pro paste and we glue the weights in last after we finish the build. So we're going to do the same thing Funky did first where we put glue or pro paste down into the handle. Want to get it all around where our arbors are going to be. Now we glue the blank, same thing as the casting, glue the top arbors, leave a space in the middle and glue the bottom arbors. Here's what it's going to look like inside the Suka 2. We took the butt off because we're not adding the weights now. These arbors are going to go right here and fit in well. These arbors are going to go right here under the real seat threads. Now we glue it in. Slowly turn as you glue. One thing I do a little bit different than Funky is I push some of that glue up under the real seat immediately. It also pulls some off like he did with his tape trick into the trash can. But I like to pack that glue under the hooks. There can be a space under there sometimes past that tape. So I like to pack it in right now. Before we take the tape off, we'll pull some of that excess glue off the blank and off the seat. Now we are done with the gluing of this part. Like I said, we're going to add the weights and the butt cap at the end to balance it with more pro paste. And we're not gonna add a trim piece right here. We're gonna do a thread ramp instead once this dries. Also very important, never leave the hood on while it's drying. Just leave that off and put it on before you put your guides on. That's also important. We'll let it dry and we'll see you soon. Another day, another drab olive colored mud hole shirt. And we finished the Sukatu bait caster, almost. We're gonna show you what we did to get from the glued handle all the way to a finished rod and why. So first off, we have this hood on here, but to epoxy it, we had it up here taped on the blank. We didn't have to though, and here's why. Because with the piece we used here, it extends far enough to where our thread didn't start till after the hood. On the spinning rod, like we're about to show you, the thread will go under the hood. We have to do something different. If you remember, when we glued the handle, we did not have the hood on the threads. Before we put the guides on, we slid the hood down the blank and taped it to the blank, then put the guides on, then wrapped and epoxied. Here's how this looked while we wrapped and epoxied. The hood taped up on the blank where it won't move at all, so we could do all this. Now we'll show you what you have to do if you build like we did on this spinning rod. First thing we did is took a china marker and marked where that hood ends on the blank. Now we put our hook keeper on, and you have to be conscious of where you put this. You can't put it too close, because if the hood is on the thread still, it might not be able to get off. But if it's far enough away from the hood and the threads to where the hood's free, you can easily slide it on and off. We'll have to slide it off now and tape it for the next step, which is doing the thread wrap. We have the hood taped to the blank. Now let's wrap this thread wrap. We did the thread ramp, we did the decorative thread, the Suka 2 decal, and the spec decal. Now we let this dry, do two more coats, and then we put the weights in the butt. All right, I've wrapped this rod, got two coats of epoxy on it, and now all we have to do is figure out how much weight we need in this butt, glue it, let it dry, and then we can fish it. And I can show Funky a thing or two about bass fishing.
You have a few options for the types of glue you can use. You can either do Pro Glue 5 Minute, 40 Minute, or Pro Paste. We're going to do Pro Glue 5 Minute so it's a quick and easy one shot deal. Before we pour or mix that Pro Glue, you want to put the weights in the butt and figure out exactly how much weight you need for your specific or desired reel for the build. That is perfectly balanced for what I want and how I fish. So we're going to do three weights in the butt. And now we glue it. We're going to mix even parts, pro glue five minute, five cc's of each. Now that we have a mix, first thing we'll do is lightly paint it on the butt cap. Then we're going to take our rod, turn it down vertically, and essentially pour this pro glue into the butt. Now quickly, we're going to toss all three weights in there, take our butt cap, outfit it onto the end of the Suka 2, line it up straight so that AT is perfectly horizontal on that rod. We're going to give it a few knocks so all that glue seeps down as well as the weights. We're going to take some isopropyl, do a quick cleanup, and then we're going to let it rest, sitting vertically to dry. And now we let this sit and harden. Shouldn't take long because it's Pro Glue 5 minute. I will say, if you do choose to use the Pro Glue 40 minute formula, let it sit a little bit and let it thicken up before you pour it and let it dry. I looked over the rod and the glue job one more time. Now we'll set it there, not move it at all, let it dry. And once it is, we'll take it out in the water and catch some fish on it. Scoped it. That was cool. I showed him how to build them. We built the rods. We fished the rods. What do you think? I don't know if you showed me how to build them. We built them together and we built them well. Picked out some good colors that you wouldn't have thought of that look good and they fish good. Incredibly balanced, so sensitive. We dragged worms and craw baits all day, flipped a little bit, bed fished, and I couldn't ask for a better build. Not a more balanced one, at least, that's for sure. Forge Carbon, Matt 3K, spinning, casting. Buy them now, mudhole.com. Mudhole. Suka 2. Mm -hmm.